So here is part two with Eton on day 37. And I'm introducing him to the mane conditioner because I'm going to try to brush out his mane. So I'm introducing it to him, letting him see it on that right side. Kind of, I like to let them sniff it and then take it away. And then they get a little condition to seeing the bottle move up and down. And typically with them, they have you know, body zones. So we've got his nose, kind of his head, his neck. So whenever I'm introducing anything, especially with Eton, he has to be kind of at the nose first, and be comfortable with that. And the minute I try to move an inch past that is where we have the uh, wanting to flee. So I'm going to just do a little bit of approach and retreat with it. And again, now he's getting used to seeing the bottle kind of move. It's a white object. Now he's holding his ground and giving me a lick and chew. That was pretty good. I feel like though, if uh, with that lick and chew, I probably should have given him a bigger release. So that's why he's going to feel like he needs to move. I feel like if I would have given him that bigger release, then I would have avoided this extra right here. But I missed it, so I'm hindsight's always twenty twenty sometimes. But I'm also kind of in the moment and going off of the feel. There was good. Got another lick and chew. In a deep breath. So that's all really good. Now I'm able to kind of inch the bottle further past. Now I'm almost at mid neck. And I'm trying to make sure I'm staying calm and relaxed. That was really good. And uh, my spray bottle part wasn't really working, so I had to take the top off. So in taking the top off, it smells a little bit different. So uh, that caused a little bit of anxiety from him and then he did a really good job right there and I'm just able to sprinkle it his mane's pretty thick so I want to make sure I can get it uh, nice and conditioned to help get the tangles out pretty easily since it's never been brushed before He's actually doing really well because I'm having to contort it a little bit. And that was really good. And now I grab the... We'll put the nozzle back on. And now I'm going to grab the brush. Which the brush is black. It's a small brush and it has uh, some cover colorful little bristles on it um, which also in fact make a lot of noise which I didn't realize so now he's being pretty good about the movement he he wants it on the left side but to his dismay his mane is mainly on the right There he held his ground. That was really good. And I'm trying just to do it in short spurts. And again, if I would like me to do anything, I would like to do a couple of brushes and then give a bigger release. Let me go back. And that was good. 
That was even better right there. Again, this brush is kind of wimpy and it's making a lot of sound. So that was in regards to the sound that it made. This is pretty sensitive to noise still. And I'm trying to stay in right at that like 45, right at the shoulder, so I'm in a pretty safe spot. And now that he's gotten a lot softer, I can keep him a little flex so I can disengage that hind leg. That was good because he dropped his nose an inch. Even better. So now he's having to adjust to that sound of the brush, not just... Uh, the feel of being brushed. So that was a good looking chew right there. And he's definitely made me work for every inch. So now he's uncomfortable and wanting to move and I'm just gonna stay a little bit here, keep the pressure on. And there he's thinking about stopping. That was good. So I tried to take it away pretty quickly. So now he's standing still. So that was good. Had a look and chew moment there. Yeah, I'm just trying to make sure I can get most of the tangles out. Now he's handling the noise pretty well. So that was good. He dropped his neck down a little bit. And I'm just having to stay patient. If he wants to move around, I mean, I would prefer him to stand still, but... Um, Oftentimes, I just let them move around and keep the pressure there until the minute they stop and then release the pressure. Again, like for me, I would like to see myself give a bigger release at times. But we're still making some progress. So got a good lick and chew, so I gave him a minute. That was really good. Give him a rub. And again, this is already huge improvement compared to just a day ago where he would just bolt from that side. So and there's a blow, but he had to release that tension and he's got so much tension. However, you may see that he will have a hind leg cocked every now and then. So some that sometimes that can be considered as a form of relaxation or oftentimes though he's such a tense horse he'll do it and it's kind of like it's a loaded gun a little bit. So that that hind leg can be ready for a kick or be ready for a bolt. Um, so I'm aware of the hind legs, it's just every part of his body kind of taking mental notes. And for him, the dropping of the neck is really significant. So he's dropping it down a couple of inches. That's a big deal for him. Took a deep breath and a lick and chew. Now I'm able to start to brush a little further down the neck. And this is really good that he's allowing me to kind of be on this right side, brushing the mane. He still has moments of tension, but he's he's working through it. And I'm trying to do it in kind of small spurts here of brushing, kind of getting those tangles out.
And then that was really good. He dropped his neck right there. Did a lick and chew. So then I back away. Give him a little bit more space. And then give him a rub. And just working on a little bit of those facial nerves that can help elicit some relaxation. And there I was able to get his head and neck to drop. Got a lick and chew. So moving in the right direction with him, I think uh, this was a big step for him. And working on that right side and then having the noise and getting his mane brushed out. So really excited for this boy.